When it comes to the films of Christopher Nolan, I picture films of a huge scope and scale. So after his last movie, Tenet, I was surprised that his latest movie was going to be a biopic on J. Robert Oppenheimer, the so-called father of the atomic bomb. Now many years ago, Christopher Nolan had attempted to make a biopic on the billionaire Howard Hughes, but because of the movie The Aviator by Martin Scorsese, that movie got shut down. As the studio didn't want their biopic competing with another biopic about the same character. I do think one day Christopher Nolan will return to do his Howard Hughes biopic, and he said so that he would like to sort of take it on again in the near future. But for now we're going to get the biopic on J. Robert Oppenheimer with Killian Murphy in the lead role. As I mentioned with the scale of Christopher Nolan's movies, I don't think this will be a traditional biopic, and the fact that it's dealing with something so important and world-changing as the creation of the first atomic bomb which has led to nuclear energy and potentially the destruction of all of mankind. I think Nolan is a perfect person to take on this biopic as it won't just be your traditional story and I think he's going to be able to tell the story in a very visually unique way. The movie is said to take place over 40 years of J. Robert Oppenheimer's life and it's going to lead up to the invention of the atomic bomb. With a biopic and obviously dealing with real world history, there isn't going to be too much suspense in terms of what the story is going for, and this is said to be an adaptation of one of the biographies about J. Robert Oppenheimer. I do however feel like that's not necessarily in order to tell a good story of not knowing where the story is going to go. I think the exploration of how this character felt about creating the atomic bomb and, you know, almost the father of atomic weapons, and somewhat being responsible for the death of hundreds of thousands of people with the bombs that dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But when it comes to teaser trailers, this doesn't give too much away at all. It's simply showing, like, Killian Murphy's character, Robert Oppenheimer, just saying a few lines from the film as in, like, a monologue, and then over it we see some very stylish imagery of nuclear weapons going off and them at the test sites. We don't see any other major actors in this trailer other than Killian Murphy who plays the lead character. The trailer itself was very reminiscent of the first trailer for Interstellar where we just heard Matthew McConaughey's voiceover on the trailer and not much imagery from the movie. This movie does have such a big cast and I think a lot of the roles are just going to be cameos as, um, for example, I know Gary Oldman's in the movie, reportedly playing President Harry Truman, but Gary Oldman said that he only shot for one day on the movie. But the main cast, uh, the main four actors, are said to be Kelly Murphy, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr. and Emily Blunt. But like I said, we only really see Killian Murphy in the trailer at this time, but like that's similar to how what we got in Interstellar before we got a trailer sort of exploring more of the story and sort of giving us an idea of the story that's going to be told across the movie. A lot of people had joked that when Christopher Nolan was going to do this movie that he doesn't like using CGI and have questioned how is he going to recreate the atomic bomb blast and some people suggested that he was actually going to blow up a nuclear weapon and film that. Obviously I think that's a load of nonsense but it's recently come out that they've recreated the Trinity test without any CGI and I'm not too sure how they would do that. I'm sure there's likely to be some computer generated imagery on top of like filming explosions and that's how they've recreated it but you know it'd be easy enough for any nuclear weapon going off in a movie just to be created with computer generated effects. So I presume, but I don't know for sure, is that they filmed with plenty of explosions, uh, close-up zooms of like miniature explosions, stuff like matches going off with like high frame rate cameras, and they've somehow compiled that together to create the Trinity test explosion. And I'm sure it'll be quite visually stunning, considering like Christopher Nolan's team and who he's working with, and just the visual qualities of his films in the past. And overall, just the fact that he likes doing stuff in camera and shooting stuff practically, I think that's going to really enhance the movie. And a lot of movies now just seem to be done on green screen. I think a lot of major movies like Marvel Cinematic Universe just use green screens. And it takes you out of, like, what was it to make a movie? And the scale of the movie, you know, it's also shot on IMAX in 35mm and 70mm cameras. 
And a lot of movies now just shoot on digital, and the fact that he's actually shooting on film, celluloid, that's just something that, like, that's what's great about making movies. And it has a distinct visual look and how it looks when it's projected on the screen. And I think, you know, that can be lost on a movie that's just shot on a digital camera. You know, it just looks more like television, for example. And I think that's a lot of the criticism that digital films get. Really, to me, it only seems like it's Christopher Nolan and Quentin Tarantino who are still big advocates of shooting on film. As someone that, like uh, Martin Scorsese is also known to do that. The cinematographer like Roger Deakins, you know, he's moved away from shooting on film and rather do digital now, as he says, he doesn't really see the difference. And digital film production is a lot cheaper in the long run. And, you know, you have advantages of getting to see the footage before the film is developed. So I suppose the fact that they're shooting on film means like getting it right the first time, like getting the scenes right, making sure not only are all the actors in the right place, but the lighting is correct. Uh, the scenes are correct, the set is looking in pristine condition. And I think, you know, that's what true filmmaking is supposed to be. And, you know, Christopher Nolan makes these big films that, you know, actually get people to go out to the cinema to see uh, that are outside of, like, something from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this is a film I will definitely go and see at the cinema and try and see it in an IMAX screening because that's how it's been shot. Stuff like, you know, the visuals of actually shooting up a mountain in Inception and doing like big stunts on the set of Tenet and, you know, doing the backwards driving on the highway. And, you know, as much as, you know, Tenet seems to be a hit and miss film in regards to, you know, moviegoers, but I think the spectacle of it is still somewhat impressive. As much as I kind of don't get the movie, I did enjoy it to some extent and can appreciate the hard work and effort that went into actually making the movie and, you know, actually shooting it in camera and shooting these stunts in real life, rather than just relying on CGI. There is also a shot in the trailer that is in black and white, and as some of the footage that did get shown early on before a proper trailer, and some of the photos that have been released were all in black and white, I did wonder if the film was going to be completely shot in black and white. However, Nolan has said that it's going to be a mixture of black and white and colour, and the fact that he wanted to bring back some of the flashbacks he did in Memento that were in black and white, and incorporate that into the movie. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays into the film again. You know, it's just going to not be a traditional biopic, and I'm wondering how the use of black and white images will like really enhance the story and the flashbacks and maybe the relevance of those scenes, but we'll have to wait and see. The movie does also contain quite an extensive cast and as I said earlier about a lot of actors are supposedly just cameos or have small roles but the main cast members are Killian Murphy, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr and Emily Blunt but then it also includes actors Florence Pugh, Kenneth Branagh, Gary Oldman, Rami Malek, Josh Hartnett just to name a few and reportedly lots of uh, Hollywood A-listers were getting their agents to try and get them a small role in the movie as they knew it had this big scope and scale and I think it's good to see that Christopher Nolan is still attracting a lot of the talent in Hollywood there is obviously some controversy about how he had to step away from working with Warner Brothers after the release of Tenet Nolan was adamant that the film gets released in the cinema and not get a digital release on HBO Max which was what they were pushing for for all their movies during the COVID-19 pandemic but Nolan wasn't having it and he said this film needs to be out in the cinema and that's what's going to happen and I think although that did happen I think it did get released on HBO Max a lot earlier than he had hoped and that finally led to Nolan leaving Warner Brothers the studio that had worked with him for a very long time and you know he made big hits for them of The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, Inception you know films that made billions at the box office but he walked away and he went to Universal. And I think a lot of Hollywood studios were very keen to swoop Nolan up. And I think Nolan did have some clauses in if he was going to make the film for Universal. He wanted to have like a hundred million budget just to make a biopic. And then he also wanted it to have a exclusive time released in cinemas before it went to any streaming or it was released for digital download. You know, he really appreciates the cinema-going experience, and he wasn't willing to compromise on that at all. 
And I think that, you know, this sort of film can get people excited. You know, it's not going to do as well as something like The Dark Knight or even something like Inception. But I think this could be very financially successful. And it's not such a huge budget that it's going to sort of, like, flop so horrifically. And I think this film will do quite well at the box office. For a, a non-IP film, that is. You know, if it's a Marvel or DC film, you sort of expect... 500 million dollars or more and you know of a smaller film like this if it wasn't Christopher Nolan it probably wouldn't be expected to make any more than 100 million at the global box office and that's probably pushing it quite a bit but you know because it's got Christopher Nolan it's got big actors in it you know Killian Murphy's very popular from like Peaky Blinders Robert Downey Jr actually bothering to do a role outside of Iron Man I think that will intrigue a lot of people and Christopher Nolan has also commented, he says, like, Killian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr. in this are two of the best actors he's ever worked with. And I do think this could actually be their Oscar wins. I think Killian Murphy could potentially win for lead actor. And I think Robert Downey Jr. will probably get nominated, at least, for best supporting actor. But I do think this could be his win. And it's just a bit annoying that, you know, this film is releasing in July and... You know, the same thing that happened with, like, Dunkirk, that, you know, the films that released in the summer don't tend to get as much notice on the award season. So, like, films are just, like, Oscar bait get released sort of November, December, January time, ready for the Academy Awards. And sometimes they get nominated for awards even though they haven't been released yet. Like, I think I've seen films have been nominated for Golden Globes and they haven't even been released in the cinema when the nominations are announced, and that's kind of dodgy. But the fact that, like, I think going back to Dunkirk, you know, that came out in the summer, but it's still got recognition at the Academy Awards, and I think this having a summer release won't impact it. And I do also think this could actually be Christopher Nolan's Best Director Oscar win. We'll have to wait and see. I do really think he deserved it for Dunkirk over... Guillermo del Toro for The Shape of Water, but that's a story for another time. But I think like this film is going to be very unique and very special to a lot of people, and the fact that it's sort of going back to, you know, away from CGI and it's just traditional filmmaking, yet it's dealing with something so massive like the atomic bomb and the story behind that will get a lot of people excited. I think we'll get another trailer a bit closer to the release date and that will sort of give us more of a shape of the film and we'll show off the other actors in the movie. I think, you know, it'd be a good idea in future trailers to show Robert Downey Jr. as a prominent part of the movie in order to help promote it. You know, despite he's walked away from the Iron Man role now that he's still very well known and very well recognised. And I think having him prominent in the trailer later on, close to the release date, will really help the film's box office and promote the movie. Despite not enjoying Tenet as much as I probably should have for a Nolan fanboy, as some people would call me, you know, I'm really excited for this movie. And I think any director can have bad movies and, you know, that shouldn't affect your view on them. I think some directors I really like, you only like a handful of their films, but you always give them a chance because you think they create interesting movies. And like I've not hated Tenet, I've not really watched it since I saw it at the cinema, but I just think it wasn't for me. But I can appreciate like the scope and the scale behind that movie, and you know what it did for Christopher Nolan to finally move away from Warner Brothers, and you know this led him to make this movie. Because I'm not sure that had he not left Warner Brothers, he may not have made this movie. He might have gone and done something else with Warner Brothers. But we'll never know now. I am very hyped for this movie and I can't wait to see it in cinemas when it comes out in July next year. And I'm sure I'll talk about it a lot more if we get another trailer. And I may end up reviewing the movie when it comes out in the cinema. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Oppenheimer trailer. If you haven't already, please subscribe and click the bell icon to receive notifications for all of my videos. That's it for now. Thanks for tuning in.